on salvage hunters. Oh, get him, boys. This baronet gets all fired up. It's a real tank. Drew weighs up the options when offered a tank. 25 grand for a tank, 50 grand for a divorce. He gets taken for a ride not once, but twice. And the team is stumped by what Drew's brought home. What is it? It's an unexploded World War II bomb. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With help from his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up the street. Yeah. Drew Pritchard is famous for his ability to find unique and quirky items. Often, the owners of these items are unique and quirky, too. The best thing about my job is the people we meet, from aristocrats to uh, eccentrics. Um, their places are difficult to get inside, as sometimes inside their heads, too. But you just never know what you're going to find when you get there. <laughs> Drew and Julian have been friends and on-off colleagues for 25 years so each understands the salvage hunting potential of a visit to a stately home. Their first stop is five hours away in Somerset and an appointment with a rather colourful peer of the realm. Today, we're trying to find Mournsall House. Uh, we've had a call from a guy called Sir Ben Slade. He rang me and he was just like, have you got cash? <laughs> have you got cash? Bring cash. Hot and stickies. Bring some green with you. I am Sir Benjamin Slade, some baronet of Mansell, and this is my home. I have many things for sale. Every, in fact, everything is for sale. Anything you want to buy, we'll make you a price. Here we are, Mansell House. God, it's beautiful, isn't it? Now, that is a tree-lined driveway. That is... Wow. God, it's beautiful. Sir Ben's assistant, Michelle, is on hand for the tour. Nice to meet you. Hiya, Michelle. Hi there. Hiya. Hi, Julian. Julian. Hi, Dios. How you doing? Hello. Welcome to Mortsel House. Hi, This Drew. is the, one of the most important events since Alfred the Great rode through here in 1878. <laughs> <laughs> Chaucer was here as well, John of Gaunt, and that dreadful woman, Queen Matilda. Sir Ben is a true original. I think what Britain's built on to guys like Sir Ben. Our slades are fairly new round here. We've been stuck here since 1771. Just here to look through your sheds, to be yeah. honest with you, and try and buy some things. I am totally, absolutely motivated to get some money in right now, and I will sell anything. I hope he makes an offer for the whole damn place, about 25 million to see me right. It's exactly what Drew's looking for. A stately home, an eccentric, impoverished aristocrat willing to sell. Let the hunting commence. This is our ballroom and dining room. The unfortunate thing about it is the floors need renewing because they're absolutely worn out, so I need some dosh off you today. I would like about 20,000 quid. It's great. If you've got the stuff, I'll spend it. Oh, go for that. I want it in notes as well because if I put it in the bank, they snatch it. <laughs> anyway. That's one of the reasons why we have absolutely no, no money. The last of it spent by Uncle Alfred, who was unknown as Alfred the Rake. He had 25 horses when he was master of the Avonvale Hounds, yeah. and that's where all the money went. Plus, he had six illegitimate children. We've been going downhill ever since then. It happens. What's up for grabs in the house? Nothing or anything at all? Everything has its price. Everything. Perfect. That's what I want to hear. I'll show you one or two interesting things here. The mirror? Yeah. Beautiful, that mirror, isn't it? Mm, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, that's a bit special, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Lovely. I think that's a 300-year-old Florentine mirror. It must be worth a few bob. Yeah. What's it worth? Well, I think it's worth um, nearer 30, 20 to 30. Eccentric, yes. But Sir Ben is bang on the money with his estimate for this mirror. Right. right. Okay. I think everything in the house might be slightly too pricey for me. Yeah. <laughs> Really? Yeah, well, maybe a little. Well, you we can do little. a finance plan, if you like. Yeah. So much <laughs> down, <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> Clearly, Drew needs to look for slightly less upmarket hunting grounds. So you're going to show us some sheds now, are you? Sheds? Yeah, yeah. Do we do a bit of yard now? And on the subject of hunting... Ben said, hang on a second, well, before we go outside, I just need to get my shotgun. I thought, oh, my God, I, you know, what have I done? I didn't pinch anything. 
Come on, boys. Keeping an eye on the cocked rifle, Drew and Julian follow into the outbuilding. Get them, boys! Get them! Go on! Get them! Where's their rats got to? Hop, 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 hop! All clear! Any self-respecting rat would have done a runner. Is it safe? I don't know if it's safe. Not man. really. <laughs> Do you want the light on, Michelle? Put the lights on. Sorry. <laughs> okay, watch where you, you step, go first, guys. It's dangerous. Sure. Oh. Dead rat. Dead rat. Nice. Okay. Oh. Ed no. <laughs> I'll give him here. Drew's trained eye spots a diamond in the rough, an Edwardian fender designed to protect from the fire, but with a handy seat for warming a cold backside. The fender, club fender. A fully restored Edwardian fender recently sold at Christie's for £1,625. This one is worth around £580. That's something you'd part with? I don't know, you've got to hit me. What would you want for this pigeon and poo encrusted thing? It's a, worth a powerful amount of money. It is in disgusting condition, Ben. No, no. Yes, it, it's covered in poo. How much have you got? £150 for this pigeon poo rusting thing. £150? Yeah, look that. at the state of it. <laughs> what? It's stinking. What about a couple hundred? 200 quid. What? 200 quid. Done. <laughs> Right, you've got the fun job. You've got to get this out I've of I've got here. to get it out of here. Oh, yeah. help. Don't worry, Jules. We've gone from £30,000 down to £200. That's much more my sort of level. So Ben's clearly now want to do some deals. I'm excited. Go get them, boys. Go on, get them, boys. Fetch them out. Sniff them out. And sniff out some money while you're about it as well. Molly, Molly, Molly. Come here. Come on. Oh, right, that's all right. I've got, I've got the creature. Right, there we are. It's now safe. Drew has found something unique, but not as unique as Sir Ben would have him believe. Where did this come from? <laughs> came out of a Medici palace, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll look at it, see if it's got any age to it. What is it? What would you call that? It's a... It's a, it's part, it's a fireplace. It's a is part it? of a chimney piece insert, yeah. Probably not from an Italian palace, but Drew suspects that this is a mid-19th century fireplace insert, extremely rare and worth around £1,500. What do you want for this one, Ben? Well, it's going to be hundreds. I don't want tier yeah. 50p. 350? Hmm. I'll have a think about that. Hey, could you go oh. up a little bit on that? Just a frackle. Just a frackle. All right, well, look. 400 quid. Done. Done. Thank you. Lovely. So Drew's hunting has uncovered some unusual pieces. Sir Ben has been doing some hunting of his own, really? but it's a little more mundane in its results. I've been looking for some bloody egg cups. I've been looking everywhere for egg cups. Don't, don't lose them. Drew has met Sir Ben's type before and knows that, despite appearances, he needs to keep his wits about him when it comes to doing deals. This little table's quite nice. Just like the finish on it. Sort of like a fake bird's eye maple like one. It's pine. Something normally I wouldn't touch, but it's just very, very pretty, and the finish is good. With a bit of dusting and polishing, Drew believes this practical pine table can fetch close to £300. But, once again, Sir Ben knows its value and starts the negotiations at a price that leave Drew with no profit. The colour is supposed to be worth quite a few hundred quid, isn't it? Isn't it? No, not really. No, really Sorry. honest with you. It's got to be worth two. No, not to me. It's just a simple thing. It'd have to be. It'd have to be less than hundred quid. Nothing sells for under a hundred quid. You can't buy anything for <laughs> hundred quid. I'm trying to buy that for hundred. And these things are bloody gold dust. There it's won't be, be beating, any money. beating me down now. <laughs> I'm just giving in. Oh, of course, hundred. Hundred. What, what about this one here, Ben, this, uh, this large hall bench you've got here? It came out of White's, I think, when they refurbished about 100 years ago. White's is a famous gentleman's club in London, dating from 1693. If true, this would add considerable value to the piece. Are all the legs there? Yeah. It's a, it's a genuine article, all right? Yeah, that's for sure. Needs a bit of um, upholstery, isn't it? Yeah, it needs, it needs a lot of work. The frame's good, though. 
Oh, the, the horse hair's original. Yeah. Drew knows that a fully refurbished 19th century club bench could support a £1,500 price tag. So where do you want to be? How much do you want me to buy for this for you? How much? Grand. Grand, no. No, nowhere near. I'm thinking sort of 400 quid. 400 quid? 400 quid. I couldn't get out of bed for 400 yeah, quid. Yeah, come on, you're already out of bed. <laughs> I'll have to think of it and see what else you spend. All right, OK. Yeah. But once again, he's dealing with a man who that knows the value of what he's selling. He decides to leave the bench for now. Oh, I haven't seen that for ages. A little nursing chair. A pair of chairs like these are rare, and in their current state could bring around £380. Alex could probably sort that leg out, I suppose. They're fairly easy to get hold of, these singles, but a pair's interesting. Mm. Give us a fair price. Then I might be more friendly on the bench. Mm. 200. Well, they're a pair, mate. That's 100 each. I've got, well, yeah, I've got to start somewhere. Each. Up a bit, up a freckle, up a freckle. Up a freckle. 250 for the pair. Not up a freckle. It's only 100 pounds. You can't get no, a. That's, you that's cannot gonna, buy a. That's going to cost me 100 quid to sort that leg out, for sure. That's just woodworm holding hands, holding that together. Look. <laughs> yeah. Come on, I don't think so. What? I've uh, gone. Two, 275 for the pair. Call it three. I can't pay three. No? No. Oh. oh, all right then. 275 even. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> Anything else you could find? Maybe. One of these. Well, there's a pair of these. Yeah, You've got a pair? Yeah, there's a pair. That makes them valuable. Yeah, look. Legs are different. The other way, Jules. No. No, they're different. The one closest to me was oak, really well made, very attractive, and no metal supports on it. What would I want to pay for that? 50. Is that all? Yeah. Sure? Sure. Are you absolutely positive? Absolutely positive. But what about the other? The other one's no good. It's yeah. pine and it's been messed about with and it's a different size and it's nowhere near as good as that one. Really? So, no, that's just a... That one. It looks the same, but it really, really isn't. They're Could chalk and cheese. a little bit? Maybe a tenner. That would be it. Yeah. 60 quid? 60 quid. What about this, Ben? Saddle horse. Well, it's old, it's genuine. Yeah, it is. Sensing he's winning the battle, Drew quickly makes an offer on another Regency piece. Got the tack hangers on both ends. The saddle horse is great. It's in the condition I wish everything I found was in. Original paint in beautiful condition, great colour, size, everything going for it. Used to store and display saddles, this piece could easily fetch almost £500. Where do you want to start? Three or four hundred. Um... Yeah, three I'm going to do. Three? Three I'll do. Sure? Yeah. Are sure. you positive? Positive. You didn't say four? No. Nope. No. Oh. All right, then. Lovely. <laughs> it seems like Drew has the upper hand, so he returns to the piece he really wants, the bench. What do you reckon, Ben, on this bench, then? Can we do... Can we do that? Four and a half? You said, did you say 475? Did I go up to 475? More no. than likely. Didn't I? No, you didn't. Didn't I? No, you didn't. Oh, OK. But you would do, wouldn't you? For a deal. Done. You did now. Lovely. Right, we'll have that. <laughs> done. I think we're done in here, then. Huh. Yeah. I'm going to miss that stuff. Some of it has been around <laughs> here for centuries. <laughs> anyway, look, Ben. I really enjoyed it today. OK, thanks, thanks. very much. Thanks for coming. I, I've got Thank to come guys. up to Wales and give you all the bloody money back. Come, come and on. see us. Come yeah. and see us. I've got lots of nice things you'd love for your house. Yeah. After making a great haul from a grand house and making a new friend, Drew and Julian arrive back at the base to unload and unveil the valuables. Waiting for them are Drew's wife, Rebecca, sales manager, Mark, and restorer, Gavin. This is one thing which should just... Saddle, Saddle horse. horse. Lovely bridal hooks on the end. They make so it, don't really, they? Really, uh, I love the colour. Perfect. Mm. What do you need to do to it? Nothing really. This, which is just really cute, it's meant to look like bird's eye maple. Very naively done. You're going to keep it like that, or? Yeah. Don't touch it. I like it. I think it's got a charm of its own. That's just quite sweet, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. That's a big fender. Big club fender, caked in pigeon poo. So Gavin, what? That needs. No, oh. no, no. Whoa. Look at that guano. <laughs> That's guano. a lot of poo. Mm, you've probably got two days in this, Gavin. Just on the poo. <laughs> <laughs>
What I'm going to do with these is just going to trade them straight out. Yeah. Pull bench. Upholstered pull bench. Very nice. 1870s. That's stunning. It's great, Absolutely isn't it? Absolutely stunning. You like it? Yep. That's my favourite so far. Classy. Absolutely. And then the best bit. Look at wow. this. Wow. 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 How that's amazing. Look at that. Isn't it incredible? That's fantastic. That's <laughs> unbelievable. That's the best thing you've bought back so far. And after a bit of detective work, the good news is that Drew's hunch about the fireplace was correct. On the rarity stake, it's right up there. There's probably not another one for sale in this country. I know what most guys have got for sale. I can't see one, haven't seen one. It's just beautiful. God, it's good. The next day, Drew and Julian are heading off on a five-hour drive to Kings Lynn in Norfolk. Today's destination is Julian's opportunity to combine business with pleasure. This is your call, this one. You've told me there's a guy down here who's got a tank, and you want to go and look at it. Look, no, you know, don't be scared of your sexuality. <laughs> Since I was 18, I've been interested in military vehicles. It's just brilliant. The noise, the smell, it's totally different to a normal car. We'll go and see this chap, but it's purely on the off chance he's going to have something of interest, right? Yeah. Haven't got all day to hang around with the guy and talk about tanks, even though you want to, and that's the yes. only real reason we're going. Oh, all right, so you don't need to humour me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is to humour you. You've got half an hour with this chap, all right? Hopefully there'll be some stuff for Drew to buy, um, which will make his day. Um, I'm sort of dragging him along, but, as I say, anything military, my sort of day out, and hopefully Drew will get a few bits and pieces while we're there. And if he says we're going, can we go in the tank, we're going to say no. Why? Because we can't be busy business. We can't go driving around in tanks. So this is it, yeah? Here we go. And there's a tank. I told you it was a tank. Are you Sean? I am, yes. Hi, uh, we've um, a friend of mine called Julian. I'm called Drew. Hi, Hi, Hi Drew. How are you doing? Hi, Julian. Uh, we've, um, okay. We're in the area and we've, we've, um, we've heard you've got tanks. I thought any guy who collects tanks must yeah. have something else of interest, so... Yeah. We're in the area, we thought we'd yeah. call in. Yeah, why not? We're looking for sort of odd and unusual items. Engines? No. No? Not engines. No. An ejector seat over the back? Oh, I've got... is it um, an alloy sort of...? Um, yeah, yeah, alloy frame, yeah. yeah. At the mention of the ejector seat, Drew suddenly become more interested. They're popular as video gaming seats or with interior designers. The uh, seat itself is a Martin Baker ejector seat. Came out of a jet, um, a Hunter Hawker. There's something about it which is unique. Have you got padded seats or anything for no, it? No, I haven't. That's just not, it, is it? So it's just one, a yeah. shell? Yes. It's just a shell of a yes, seat on a frame? Yeah. Examples like this can sell for around £450. So you pull that. Well, nothing, nothing's going to happen, obviously, if I... No, 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 not at all. No. Is it gone off? Has it sort of been released? Is it full of pressure or something? Um, how does, well, how, they're do, they, how they're do they work? All, they're all taken away anyway. Um, all that's yeah. gone, is it, yeah, off the, it? Yeah, the explosive uh, ram. It's like a sort of hot rod, bucket, racing car, spaceship type of fighter yeah. aircraft thing, yeah. isn't it? The other one I have is in... Um, Actually, a lot better. You've got condition. another one? Yes. Two ejector seats? Yes. Just in case. Yeah, just in case. <laughs> his, his and hers, you see? <laughs> in the convertible. Oh, right, nice. Yeah. yeah. As, as if she gives you all this, you know. Yeah. Say, Goodbye. Bye bye. Yeah, you just really talk too much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they do that. So, not married? No. 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 Hence, no. <laughs> <laughs> the ejector seat is one of the most expensive parts of the aircraft. Is it? Yes. So, how much would something like this cost then to? Thousands. Thousands. Hundreds of hundreds, thousands? Possibly hundreds yeah, yeah. of thousands, yeah. yeah. What can we do on this as it stands? I couldn't honestly tell you. Um, really? Um, Ballpark. Ballpark. Just imagine about three, four hundred pounds, I'd think. There's not something what you see every day. No. No. <laughs> don't don't, <laughs> don't come across ejector seats. You haven't. Often. No. <laughs> no. No, not common. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see it at 300 quid. It's the sort of thing I like. Yeah. I've never bought an ejector seat before, but, um... Have I? No. No. I think I'd pay 150 quid for it. I wouldn't pay any more. Do you want to think about it? Yeah, of course. Because I know he really wants to go and look at your tank. Which one? Which one? I can say that. Sabre. The Sabre. It's a real tank. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's that's a, real, a, proper... a, a light tank, they call them. Do you drive it on the road? Yes, road legal. Normal road tax. Insurance is cheap. 
To buy something like this is around about 25,000. Drew may not be in the market for a tank, but military enthusiast Julian has definitely given it some thought. Can't afford one, but I'd have one. Gotta be honest. When you actually fire one of these up and then go for a spin, um, I'm, the adrenaline is just un unreal. So does it go? It does. Yes, it does. Would you like uh, a ride out? And if he says we're going, can we go in the tank? We're going to say no. Oh, never thought you'd ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to have a crash, are we? No, not at all. <laughs> Good evening, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I got a fire up. Oh, cool. You don't worry about the miles per gallon when you've got something like this. You really don't. You're right. Right, Chuck. <laughs> Everybody out of your houses. <laughs> Hello, dear. I've, um, I've been out today. I've bought something rather unusual. <laughs> <laughs> what a laugh. <sighs> so much fun. <laughs> it's just so much fun. 25 grand for a tank, 50 grand for a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> now the ice is well and truly broken with Sean, Drew takes his opportunity <laughs> to resume negotiations over the ejector seat. Is the ejector seat any chance of a buy on that, or yes or no? Yes, you could. Yeah? Yes. £150? <laughs> go on, then. Yeah, yeah, great. Lovely, we'll take yeah. that as well. Got to go in a tank and an ejector seat. There you go. But nobody else has done that today. How are we going to explain this one? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's up there on the list of strange things I've bought. It's, it's getting up there. It's top ten. I think we should see no. if there's any mice in the top of this. What it's is a boy's it? nest. That's not, that's not. No, it's a robin's. Nest. Oh, is it? Yes. He's a brave man. Oh! <laughs> Over to you. Thanks yeah, for that. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Oh. He's a nice bloke. He's just you got love him, unusual don't you? taste. Julian and Sean definitely bonded over their love of all things military, and Drew can't resist teasing. You can stand around it all day in fatigues looking at each other's tanks. <laughs> back home, and the team are used to unusual things coming out of the back of the van, but even they are floored by this one. We went to a guy who uh, collects tanks and military vehicles, and uh, we drove around his village at a tank. <laughs> Terrifying. I just laughed for ten minutes solid. It was brilliant. And I was sat up in the top and I had the helmet on with the big ear things and my shades. It was brilliant. <laughs> but we bought this off him, which is really cool. It's an ejector seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's all alloy. And it's just got such a fantastic look to it. It's got the thing out the top here where the, where the parachute would come out. That's where the explosive would have gone. It could make it work. No, it won't work. <laughs> I sincerely hope it doesn't work. No, you can't make it work, cos you'd be shooting people 150 <laughs> foot into the air. That's a great idea. Where's Mark? Let's get it going, yeah. Yours will definitely do it. Yeah, you were top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'm not sure whether to strip it and polish it, cos no, the... Uh, but it might take Gav a week to strip and polish it. That's the problem. You'd um, love that. Uh, so you don't know how much restoration you're going to do? No. The look on Gavin's face when I said I wanted to strip and polish it was like, oh my god. But depends if he's if he if he gets on my nerves, I'm gonna make him get it polished. <laughs> it's nice to see Drew back. Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? While Drew decides what to do with his ejector seat, the decision to restore the couch from Mansell House has already been made. Usually we would sell furniture on straight away, but that I think is worth having it professionally reupholstered. Very saleable. Upholsterer Craig Hughes is based a few miles away in Colwyn Bay. He's been restoring furniture for Drew for many years and knows exactly what he likes. When we strip this out, you've got 100 years of muck and dirt in it. And it all blows around, it goes up your nose, it's absolutely filthy. It's cost around £400 to restore, but Rebecca's instincts have paid off. Perfect. The worn-out couch is now a stunning piece of furniture that Drew knows will sell easily. We've done it in just a natural calico, 
So this can easily be taken off and reupholstered in, you know, somebody's choice of fabric over the top of this, and now it's ready for sale. It's almost a blank canvas now. The last visit was a rare treat for Julian, but today it's definitely one for Drew. It's a 300-mile trip to Aylesbury, where he's meeting a true car enthusiast with some genuine pieces of automotive history. We've been called down to a farm by a guy called Neil Tuckett, who runs Tuckett Brothers, which is a Model T Ford restoration and repair and sales specialist. This guy's like the leading authority in the country. I keep a few Model Ts back for myself, they're my own personal ones, but otherwise everything else is here, it's for sale. And uh, I'm always glad to see another one go out of the yard because at the end of the day, it's another Model T that's going on the road. But restorer Gavin, who's accompanying Drew today, is not so thrilled. I'm sick of bloody Model T Fords. I try and paint some interest in Model T Fords. I'm not as much of a car nut as Drew, so um, I'd rather be back at the shop. I don't have a problem. You're the one with the car aversion, of you need car aversion therapy. Oh, I can hear the whiz of a grinder. That's got to be the place. Oh, I like the look of this place already. Hi, Drew, hi, yeah, how Yeah, nice to meet you. Well, where would you like to start? Just... Do you want to have a look round? Please, yeah, can yeah, I just, fine. just have a look at through everything, please? You can, no problem. I love that one over there. I've never had a, a Model T Ford. I've had hundreds of classic cars, literally. That's a chance. I've never. <laughs> Neil shows Drew an original, unrestored Model T Ford, but it's not for sale. But this is the car I take home. Okay. I just love this one. Pretty this well, pretty original easy. car. Even the upholstery is pretty original. And I've been offered quite a lot of money for this car, but that's my car, and I enjoy it. Look at him go. Yay. Gavin has been looking elsewhere and thinks he's found something for Drew to buy that doesn't have four wheels. Drew? Yes, mate. There's green lamps up here. Oh, yeah, there's some green enamel lamps up there. Um, yeah. Can I have a dig up there, Gav, see if you can yeah. get them? Watch yourself, mate. Yeah. For the, you know, the modern aluminium ones. Yeah. Yeah, Coolicon. Yeah. Suck together. Popular in the trendy restaurant and lounge market, Coolicon shades can fetch as much as £45 each. Excellent. How much are these, Neil, each? Yeah, Good, yeah, bad and ugly, I'll take What do you think they're worth? Um, well, I, I want to buy them as, for as little as I possibly can. So, what, how much a pop? Oh, they're worth a five rupees, aren't they? Five for a piece is fine, I was going to say that too. The two needing and ferreting. We've got Gap in one side and Drew the other. Arsenic poison. What I like about it is the poison, it's not just painted on, that's actually embossed and in, uh, into the front surface of it. So it's always. Yes, 50s, and it's always been for poison. And it's a cool colour, you know, it's just a nice little thing. And uh, I like the fact that it's non-returnable. <laughs> Original 1950s canisters like these are popular with collectors, designers and film and TV prop agencies. This one could go for around £65. Poison tub, how much is he? Are you going to have a draw for on that? What are we going to pay for that? 20 quid? That's going to be the max. I can't go any more for that one. I'd actually got a 25 in mind on that one, actually, because I thought that was a decent a decent tub. Go for 25, because you've got to like the these. OK, we'll have a deal at £25, that's fine. Yeah, we'll have those. I did, I did get off lightly on the lights. Oh, we're going to find another shed, then. Yeah, let's we? go and find some more stuff. Right, Drew, so here, Drew, we've got some real agricultural salvage, which... Well, we'll have a look. May or may not excite you. Maybe, you never know. Quite like these big old troughs. Yeah, some of the old riveted ones are quite pleasant, yeah, now, aren't they? Yeah, I quite like those. You know, they're quite interesting. Just pull that one down, Gavin, and just have a quick look at it. Are these, are these for sale or are you using these? No, I'd sell them. You know, they're basically gardening ornaments, aren't they? Yeah. That's what well, I, what I like about them is the rivets yeah. and the, just the sheer size yeah. of them. They've definitely got something about them. Cleaned and converted into garden planters, these early 20th century feed troughs could easily sell for £200 each. What, what, what sort of money are we looking at for these? Oh, give me an offer on those. Probably more than scrap value. They're worth more than scrap value. So what, what do you reckon? Fifty pounds? Yeah, I'd take fifty pound each for those. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one. Yeah, I like this one. They'll end up as a nice pair of planters. Yeah. 
few more agricultural bits in here. Oh, goody. All been tidied up. Well, it's all disappeared over the years. Yeah. Been scrapped, but a few things here I don't like throwing away. Sorry, Neil, I couldn't help myself going in here, Neil. What have you found in there? That beautiful speedster. That's the golden Ford. Do you want to look in there while you... Yes, please. I've read about this car. All oh, right. This is a car, Neil, that, on a personal level, I really, really want to see. Wait till you see this. 1911 Model T Ford. Wow. If you don't like cars, after seeing this, you're a soulless, heartless person. Reputedly, it's the only brass-bodied car in the world. As you can see, it's in its winter condition, all greased up. Yeah, you can feel the grease yeah, on over yes. everything. Yeah, yeah. The Golden Ford is actually made of solid brass and is unique. Neil has owned it since the 1980s. It's a real piece of automotive history, as it won the 1912 All Ford Race at Brooklands, the historic racetrack based in Weybridge in Surrey, now the site of an auto museum and venue for vintage car racing. Whoa, look at that. So basically a Model T engine, overhead valve conversion. I bought it out of a cellar up in Shropshire. An old boy had got Model Ts and bits and pieces, and he said to me, well, there's something in the cellar. I know it's interesting, but I don't know what it is. This is Neil's pride and joy, and is difficult to value, but he's already turned down many offers for this car. Almost time to leave, but not before an automotive trip back in time. Do you want to learn uh, how to drive a Model T? I'd love to. Who's going in the back? I'll go in the back. There you go. Ooh. That's the advanced retard. Yep. Set that up. OK. Throttle down. Yep. Handbrake back. Yep. Switch on. That's yep. a coil buzzing. Yep. And then we have to wind it. Choke. <laughs> OK. OK, handbrake halfway forward. That's the first key thing. Right, when you're ready, handbrake forward. Reduce your revs and take the foot off. How's it feel? Fantastic. <laughs> the first production Model T Ford was built in 1908 and sold for $825, the equivalent to $15,000 or around £9,000 today. It was the first car within the reach of America's middle class due to the innovation of the assembly line and interchangeable parts. At the height of its success, it took as little as 93 minutes to build a complete car. And we're done. That's it. You're a Model T driver. That's fantastic. I've enjoyed that so Gavin's much. Gavin's bright and <laughs> stiff. Look at him. He's gone bright red. It must be the sunshine. <laughs> Gavin has been huffing and puffing and whinging all day about not wanting to go and play with the Model T Fords, but I knew the second we got him behind the wheel, he'd just love it. Really what we've got is... Thank you very much. That's all right. That's most enjoyable. Thank you. <laughs> I want one now. Yeah. Quite an experience. Never driven one of those before. So uh, a really good end to a quite a boring day. What's your poison? Well, I've off. got a little present for you anyway. Oh. You know you hit that gatepost on the way around. <laughs> well, there's the hubcap. You can keep it as a souvenir. That's brilliant. It's an English one. Yeah, was it? Well, I haven't got USA on, you see. English ones. That won't be sold. That's brilliant. Thanks a lot, Neil. <laughs> Cheers. It's been a pleasure. I think today was... It was more fun than work, wasn't it? After a small but successful haul, and with Gavin finally converted into a classic car lover, Drew and Gavin head back to the shop to drop off the items. Big pile of those. Mark, little Loads. ones. That's Lovely, yeah. just little what ones we need. Difficult to sell. No. no. Give them to Ollie. It, then I don't want to do too much to them. It'll take all the charm of them away if we do too much work. Yeah, I don't want them to look new. I want them to look they're 100 years old. I don't want them to look pristine. They are good, old-fashioned, heavy engineering trough. That's its charm. 
Why ruin it? Right, sit there. That's it. The items are prepared and photographed to go online with a little help from Enzo. Good lad. Keep him, keep him with the jerky. Sure keep the jerky. Say. He's such a poser. So He's such a poser. Good lad. Come on in. Out. Out you come. Good lad. Oh, come on. Oi. Can you have a piece now? I haven't got any. I'll put it back in the jar. Oh, that's <laughs> rotten. Go and give him a piece. Come on, mate. Slightly. Which one do you reckon? Starting to pose now. He is, isn't he? Love me, love me, love the camera. Oh, look at his face. Hey, Enzo is the... He is my most valued employee. He's the one I get the least grief from. There's only one thing that gets Drew more excited than a trip to a car enthusiast, and that's a trip to a scrapyard. Today, Drew and Julian are on their way to a legendary yard in Bicester. But first, they need to catch up on the pressing issues of the day. So what was it? Music for breakfast again? No, I had cornflakes, oh. yoghurt, oh. apple juice and a cup of tea. Because oh. yesterday, I went for a curry and loads of lager. <laughs> so after now, my yin and my yang need to be... Uh, I need to yin my yang, basically, and sort okay. myself out. We're going to a guy called Tony. He's got a scrapyard called Elsie Hughes in Bicester. My name's Tony, and um, I came up here when, we was, uh, when I was a boy, for about four years old. The main fund producer would be buying and selling scrap. That's what we do. We process it a little bit, grade it, and then it gets uh, sent out on lorries. I don't want to do scrap. I need to find something beautiful amongst the scrap. I think this looks like the place. Office. Yeah. Okay. Tony. Hello. Hi. Um, Drew. Hello, how are you doing? How are you doing? Hi. This is Jules. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. I see you do a bit of reclaiming. That's right, yeah, we do that. How big's the site? It's about 10 acres, roughly. Drew is living proof that one man's trash is another man's treasure. And even after 20 years, he's excited about what lies ahead in an undiscovered scrapyard. These are brilliant, these big crucibles, aren't they? they where, are, do you, yeah. where do you get these yeah. from? We often do factory clearances. These must have been part of them. House clearing stuff, skips all manner of things. You just don't know what you're going to find. In the corner, I can see three large cast iron floor grills. These look like Victorian church floor grills from the last part of the 19th century. They're not new, that's for sure. And they've got this quatrefoil detail on here, which is like four petals like that, usually seen in church windows. Victorian cast iron grates like these are easy for Drew to sell and can fetch around £60 each. Can we pull these out, Jules? Just see what's. Yep. Make sure they're all, all all right. Yeah, that's all right. They're okay, aren't they? What do you reckon? The, the other two okay? Yeah, the two. They seem to be fine. Yeah, they look all right. How much for these grills, Tony? Uh, 20 quid a piece, something like that. Then it's an item with, you know, interesting shape, and so, you know, that's how I price things. 60 quid for three? Yeah, OK, Brilliant. that's fine, yeah, 60 pound, yeah. Well, straight away, I've managed to find, a, you know, a period piece of architectural salvage. Perfect. So there's more in here? Yep. Go into the shed and there's a, another strange mix again, wheelchairs and kettles and all manner of thing in, in there. But on the floor, there was these three or four pieces of timber, a couple of them carved, and the carving just looked a bit different. Are they oak, are they? Yeah. Is it light oak, is it? Really, Literally It's just very dry. These lines here, that's not machine done. It's just, it's off, it's clearly hand done. Yeah. Carved pieces of architectural salvage like these are popular in restoration or just as decorative items. Drew could probably get around £200 for this unusual pair. You just found them in a skip? They've been hanging around for quite a few years. Mm. It just seemed a shame just to burn them, you know? Yeah, they're too good for that, aren't they? Up a bit, up a bit, mate. Next one. There we go. Yeah. And it's that way round. Yep. Oh, wow. Lots of uses these could have had. They could have been from the gable of a, of a building. But again, very unusual. What would you want for these, Tony? If I said £50 for the lot, what do you reckon? They're good and they're interesting, but there's not an awful lot you can do with them, so they're... Mm, no. Gonna... If he thinks they got potential... Yeah, well, I'll give you on that. That's fine. OK. I'll take it's... a chance on 50 quid. Yep, OK. Cool, lovely. Thank you. Okay, that's all right. Nice no worries. I think I've possibly got an absolute bargain, or I've just bought some nice bits of timber for £50. I need to sort of sit down and go over them and just live with them for a little bit and get my head around what they are. 
underneath a pile of stuff in the distance. I saw just the end of a cast iron column coming out, so you can see the square plate with the four holes in it, and then the, the top of the cast iron column. They're somewhat Victorian, aren't they? Out of a... Yeah, they're Victorian, yeah. They're only very, very short, uh, yeah. so they're probably on a brick stanchion. But I'm hoping there's a couple of pairs. So they're slightly narrow towards the top. You've got two pairs there, you know? I hope so, but one's broken. They always yeah. crack around the base here. Just checking they're the same height. Don't want to buy mismatched stuff. They're period and they're attractive and they're useful. They're not the most exciting thing that we buy, but we always no. buy these no. regularly, because whenever we get them, they sell straight away. Always popular in the home restoration market, a pair of these columns can bring in almost 300 pounds. These two taper from the base to the top, which is very attractive. Yeah. It's a shame, bloody shame that's broken. It is. What do you want for them? 50 pounds each? No, too much. Too much? Yeah. What would you want to pay them? Um, I'd probably be, because of the break, I'd probably be trying to get away with 100 for the four. No, but I don't think you could get, I don't think they'll, we'll let them go for that. I think it are worth a little bit more. Do you want to meet in the middle again? So I said 50 apiece, which was, which was 200. You wanted to say 100. 100. So we say 150 then um, for the four? I'm giving myself a bit of a headache because when I come to sell it, I've got to explain to people, say, well, yeah, they are a bit broken, but they're still usable. Yeah, go on, we'll take them. So 150 yeah. for the four? 150 for the four. OK, okay that's great. OK. Then. Wherever he goes, Drew is always looking for the one piece that will make the trip worth his while. This is where I've spent most of my childhood roaming around places like this. Oh, yeah. And he's just spotted it. I like that pot. Do you? Yeah. It's got everything I'm looking for. And it seems obvious to me. It sort of jumps out at me. It's like as if it's got a flag waving at me. It's like, oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. It's definitely got a bit of... Um, it's, it's a, a very visual piece, isn't it, if you had that in your it garden? Is. Yeah, I think so. That's what I'm looking at it for. Cast iron cauldrons like these are coveted as garden planters and often command around a thousand pounds each. What do you want for it? Ah, oh, very good question. Uh, Four hundred. Four. Yeah. Too much for you? Yeah. What would you want to pay then? Um. When I saw it, I came with a figure in my head straight away, which is what, what I'd be happy to pay, which was two hundred pounds. Two hundred pounds. Yeah. I know that someone will come and they'll look at this and they might pay more. Maybe. Well, that's you know, the chance. Depends I'm... on the customer. That's the chance I'm going to take with it. Tell you what, look, can we tip it out? Can we tip it over then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Heavy. Oh. OK. It's just starting to go on the seam there, isn't it? I'll have to tidy that up. Do you want to meet halfway then? Tell you what, 375 then. 350? Yeah, 350 would be OK. Yeah, that's yep, OK. Lovely. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Fab. Right, there you go, Jules. You've got to get that on the van. Oh, I'll just drag it around then, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want the normal stuff. I want the strange stuff. For me, it holds the most interest, and certainly, that's got it all. One, two... All right, watch yourself. That's it. Okay. That's it. You can just roll it on there like that. Why is all the best of the balls heavy? There you go. Just turn it. Okay, mate. There you go. Where do you want to put them? OK, we'll do that. I came to a scrapyard and bought some scrap. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we'll OK. Do. Tony, Bye. thank you, mate. What have you bought today? Quarter of a ton pot. <laughs> yeah, big pot. Massive big pot. pot. The van is full, but it's the reaction of the team back home that really matters to Drew. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's an unexploded World War II bomb. No, no, it's a great big... It's, it's a, a big... big uh, down. It's a fantastic shape. And what are your plans with it? I want to put it in the middle of the shop. It's not as bad as it looks. It looks like it weighs a ton. One, two... <laughs> Gently. When you see it stood up, it looks a million dollars. See the rivets on both, both sides. Gav, just take this off, stiff brush, take that off. Anything loose out of the inside. And while we've got it here, drill a hole in it. In fact, drill two holes in it, please, just for drainage. Stick OK, we've got loads more to unload. There you go, they came from the same place. Okay. Yeah? 
seem to be collecting these at the moment. Got God knows how many of them. The cast columns, very interesting to see two pairs. Um, they can be mounted on big stone blocks, make a lovely veranda. They're nice, aren't they? Yep. Decent size, no breaks, no cracks. There's only three, though, which is a bit disappointing. But not all purchases are met with enthusiasm from the team. And there's a pair. Right, they're both pretty badly damaged. Do you know what I think we're going to make out of them? Console tables. They're against a wall. You know, you put them against the wall there. Get rid of that. Do you like them? Well, you're going to have to spend quite a bit and do something with them. Yeah, I think everybody was like, uh, uh, why have you bought those? Maybe I sort of see something in them that nobody else does. Maybe, I don't know. But they're certainly different. Up, that way. I oh, know. Try that. No. Yeah, oh, that's, that's better. it. Can't see it selling today, who knows, but I think it'll probably take some time. It's going to have to be a garden designer or somebody who really understands and knows the best use for something like that. What you don't want to do is take too much off of it, but leave enough on so that it looks aged. After a quick clean and a few snaps, the items are online and ready for sale, less than 24 hours after they were picked up at the scrapyard. These are great. At the end of the week, a new friend takes up Drew's invitation to drop by the shop. Although Sir Ben seemed desperate for cash just recently, he's now looking to wheel and deal, and Drew hopes he has just the item for him. Sir Ben. Hello. How are you doing? Good boy. Good to see you. Michelle. Hiya. Hi. Hiya. How are you? Sometimes the people I buy from become customers. In fact, it's quite common. Um, I knew if I could get Sir Ben down into the shop, he definitely going to be interested in that big pot. It's close to the door because we didn't want to move it too far. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It's bigger than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. It's probably heavier than I thought it was. Yep. Uh, but you're getting more for your money. So what do you reckon? So I'm asking 900 quid. I'm asking a bit more, but to you it's 900 to start off. Well, there's a lot of diesel. That's a lot of diesel, yeah. So should we say five? No, can't do five. What can you do? Best um, price. 700 quid and that's it. That is it. We're not doing any more. <laughs> the wad comes out, no. <laughs> 700. Thank you. There you go. Once again, the eccentric, aristocratic exterior belies a shrewd businessman. Sir Ben has managed to get the pot for £200 less than the ticketed price, but Drew's happy with the deal. Seeing Sir Ben and Michelle was great. It was really nice to have them in the shop. Taking those things from one place from out of context, something completely odd, and selling it to a new grand house in a wonderful setting like that. It's what I do, and it's what I have the most fun doing. Always a pleasure to meet you, and I'll see you next week. Michelle, Thank good you. to see you again. And you. Drive on, driver. From the couch, from Sir Ben's, right through to the columns, to the ejector seats, to, to the lamps, to all these other little things we buy. And they do have a new life, and that's what the most important thing is, for to make these things do something else and look good again. And we made a few quid too.